All right, welcome everybody and hello. So you are tuned in with education staff, Emily and Michelle from the Audubon Center of Riverlands. Um, we are so glad that you guys could join us today for another Bird Friendly Friday. So today we're gonna to be talking about backyard birding with kids. Um, and so we're really excited for this uh, presentation. We have some fun videos and we hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I will mention that we will have a live Q&A following our presentation today. So if you do have any questions for Michelle or I, you can post those in the Facebook comments below. So let's get started. So I don't know about you guys, but I have been seeing quite a few birds in the past couple of weeks, just looking out of my windows in my backyard. They're just everywhere. So this is a really exciting time, I think, for birding. And Michelle, I was wondering, how are you handling backyard birding with your young one at home right now after these past couple of weeks? Yeah, we're having a ton of fun. Um, because we're really in the middle of spring migration, we've had a lot of good activity to observe. And my daughter just like loves to get ready to go out and bird. She loves to grab her binoculars and her field guide, even though she's still kind of learning how to use them. Um, and so we, we love doing it. We've had a lot of good luck lately. And so we actually put together a video so that people at home could kind of get started and get some tips and thing, on things to do. but I think uh, birding with your kids looks way more fun than birding on your own in, in the backyard. So it looks like you guys had a great time and got ready to go and had some fun breaks in between. Um, so that's awesome. Thanks for putting that together. Um, and so with backyard birding, now that we know all that kind of goes into getting ready, um, getting the materials to go birding, there's also some really fun creative activities that you can do outside as you're observing birds. And I actually kind of put something together for one of my favorite activities. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what that looks like. Nature journaling is another gray way to record observations that you make outside. And it isn't only about observing birds. The natural world has endless discoveries. Maybe it's something you find under a rock, on a leaf, or in a tree. Now to get started, you will first need a few items. A writing utensil, 
a journal, and a pair of binoculars, optional. Once you have all the items you need, next you'll need to find a comfortable place to sit for about 10 minutes outside. Once you've found a comfortable place, you can now observe your surroundings. Take a moment and look around. What stands out to you? Then you can reflect those observations that you're making into your journal. It helps to try to focus on a specific specimen or item. I chose this rhododendron flower. I also like to use pen because there are no mistakes when you're nature journaling, just a change in direction. Now nature journaling can provide a much needed break from our technology filled world today and it also allows for mindfulness of your surroundings. Today I'm discovering more about the biodiversity of plants in my front yard. What will you discover? That was really cool, Emily. So um, in thinking about nature journaling, do you have a favorite spot to go in the St. Louis region? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I'd say typically when I nature journal, I'd love to just go to local parks. So just areas in my local neighborhood. And I like to find a secluded spot to kind of sit in and, and journal there. But the thing I really love about nature journaling is that you can do it anywhere. And another place that I've done it quite a bit is at the Audubon Center at Riverlands. And so I'd say that's one of our most, one of our very popular programs that we do with young kids. Um, and so I think what I love about uh, nature journaling with kids is the fact that um, every time you're doing it, you're actually discovering new things, even if you're in the same location. And after you make those observations, you can record them and then share them with your friends and it can get really exciting. Um, but really you can do it anywhere and there's always something new to see. That's great. So, um, you know, just like using your eyes and making observations that way, using our senses, all of our senses is a really great, great way to connect with nature. And so using our ears is also a um, fantastic way to do that. So um, we also have a, a little video here on making sound maps, um, which is a really nice way to observe birds in your backyard or wherever you are, whether you're at a park or um, at home. There's lots of options for things you can do. Making sound maps is a great way to spend time outdoors while fine tuning your observation skills. Here's what you'll need. Paper, coloring utensils, paints, and a marker or pen. First, you're gonna find a comfortable place to sit down outdoors, in your yard or on your deck. Draw an X to represent where you are on the map and listen carefully. Identify where you hear sounds and what you're hearing. Draw an image representing the sound that you heard on your map. Don't worry about making these illustrations perfect. Sound mapping is more about observation. I'm a little when I hear them. is optional, but can be a good way to support literacy skills for young explorers. Bird sounds, of course, are a great thing to include on the map. And other things to listen for include leaves blowing in the wind, frogs, people, road noise, and much more. What do you hear in your backyard? Sound maps can be a collaborative activity or done individually. And that's it. We hope this gives you some tools to get started. Have fun out there. Looks like you had some fun out there and 
you guys got a lot of sounds on that map. So lots of birds, trees, lots of different things. Um, so that's a fun activity to do. But one thing that I was wondering is what if you don't necessarily have lots of bird sounds in your backyard? What can you do to boost that? And so um, if you're gonna participate in backyard birding activities, you're going to need birds in your backyard, of course. Um, so we have another really fun activity that you can do at home with your family. And the best part is most of the materials you probably already have laying around at home or in your backyard. So let's take a look at how we can attract some more birds to our backyard. In hopes of attracting more birds to your backyard, there are many easy and creative ways to feed our feathered friends at home. One of my favorites are pine cone bird feeders. For your first step, you're going to need to find a pine cone, or you could have somebody else help you find one. You're also going to need a container, some bird seed, a butter knife for spreading. Also, be sure to tie a string on the end of your pine cone so you can hang it later. Then you're going to need to make a mixture uh, and you can use one part cornmeal and one part vegetable shortening and mix together. This is what you'll use to spread onto your pine cone. Take your vegetable shortening and use your spreadable knife to spread the mixture on your pine cone. What really helps is if you spread against the pine cone, it helps to get the mixture into all those little nooks and crannies, which will maximize the amount of seed that will adhere to your pine cone later. Make sure you get all the edges and turn it around and cover all of your spaces. Once your pine cone is covered, you're ready to roll it in your bird seed. So again, you can roll or sprinkle just make sure you cover all of the sides. Pro tip, you can seal up your vegetable shortening and use it later to make more. You can also use your leftover bird seed and throw it in your backyard, add it to your feeders to feed the birds after. Now your final step, you'll need to hang up your pine cone bird feeder. Now you can hang this in your backyard on a decorative metal hanging or even on a branch on a tree. Now all you need to do is find a spot and watch your new bird feeder and wait to see what birds will discover your yummy snack. That was great, Emily. It looks like you had some good help um, getting your pine cone bird feeder made. And I was wondering, have you had any luck attracting birds with a pine cone bird feeder yet? So I'm glad you asked that, Michelle. When I put together that video, I definitely kept an eye on my pine cones after I hung them. And I actually had one of my first sightings of a Swainson's thrush in my backyard uh, munching at yeah. the pine cone bird feeder. So that was really exciting. Um, but we, I also, of course, saw squirrels. They love them too. Um, and chipping sparrows and lots of other birds. So it's providing food to a wide range. That's really cool. So while pine cone bird feeders are one great way that you can attract birds to your yard, there are a few other things that you can do um, and we want to share those with those of you at home. So we've got one last video for you today. Well, we hope that you guys enjoyed um, these short videos that we put together for you and hopefully spark some ideas on how you can backyard bird with your family and some fun activities to do outside. So now we do have some uh, time for questions. 
So if you do have questions for Michelle or I, you can post those in the Facebook comments below. We're gonna take a moment to check to see if we do have any to answer. Some people are mentioning they love pine cone bird feeders. It is a really fun activity. It's a good way to feed birds um, without having to go out and buy any feeders. All right, so it looks like we don't have any other questions right now at the moment, but of course, if you have them, um, you can always ask Michelle or I, we can hopefully answer for you. Um, if you add them to the comments below, we'll check those later. All right. Um, another thing we wanted to point out is just a shout out to Zach Stafford. He's our AmeriCorps VISTA member at the Audubon Center. And he really was a major part in editing and putting together these videos for this presentation today. And we really couldn't have done it without Zach. So we want to uh, send out a shout out to him for that. And thanks, Zach. And then finally, um, don't forget next Friday, um, we have another Bird Friendly Friday and it's going to be a Riverlands Ranger Chat with Corinne O'Brien. Um, and so again, that's gonna be next Friday, May 22nd at 2 p.m. Um, and it's gonna be a really fun presentation. It'll give you a sneak peek of what's going on at Riverlands right now, um, what's on our trails, as well as what's in bloom. So be sure to tune in if you're interested in what's going on at Riverlands. Um, and so we hope to see you guys there for, uh, for our next Bird Friendly Friday. We also wanna thank you guys again for joining us today.